Okay, today we're going to look at simplifying radical expressions. So far in class, we have found the square root of perfect squares. So for example, if we have 5 to the second power, that equals 5 times 5, which equals 25. Therefore, we can say the square root of 25 equals 5, because a perfect square has two identical factors, and the square root of 25 is 5. Also, 6 squared equals 6 times 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. So the square root of 36 equals 6. After we found our perfect squares, we then look at, looked at estimating square roots of non-perfect squares. Your non-perfect squares are the square roots that fall between perfect squares. So if we take the square root of 31, 31 is not a perfect square because there's not two identical factors that are integers that multiply together to equal 31. So we find the perfect square that's below it and the perfect square that's above it. So the square root of 25 is less than the square root of 31. That would be the square root that's below it, the perfect square below. And the perfect square that's greater than the square root of 31 would be 36. So we can say the square root of 25 is less than the square root of 31, which is less than the square root of 36. Well, we know that the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 36 is 6. So the square root of 31 is between those two. 5 is less than the square root of 31, which is less than 6. Therefore, the square root of 31 is between 5 and 6. So to figure out which one it's closer to, that's how we estimate it. So we know that the difference between 31 and 25 is 6, and the difference between 36 and 31 is only 5. Therefore, the square root of 31 is closer to 36 than it is to the 25. So the square root of 31 is approximately 6. After we estimate our square roots, then we're going to talk about simplifying non-perfect squares. So there's two methods we're going to look at. The first method is prime factorization. So our steps are fo as follows. First, we create a factor tree to find the prime factors. Then we write the prime factors under the radical find the factor pairs and pull them out as one factor, and then multiply if needed to simplify. So if we take the example 3 times the square root of 45. So 3 is our coefficient, and 45 is our radicand. So the first thing we want to do is create a factor tree to find the prime factors of the radicand. So 45, its first factors we could say are 9 times 5, 5 is a prime factor. 9 breaks down to 3 times 3. So 3 and 3 are both prime factors. So we can rewrite this as 3 times the square root of the prime factors of 45, which are 3 times 3 times 5. So now that we have our prime factors under the radical, we find the factor pairs and pull them out as one factor. So our first pairs would be this 3 and 3. They're a perfect match. So they come out of the radical as one factor. So we already have the first three that was there. Then we pulled out the set of three, so that gives us the second three, times the square root of whatever's left on the inside, which is that five. So now we multiply, if needed, to simplify. So three times three is nine, times the square root of five. So three times the square root of 45 is simplified to 9 times the square root of 45. So let's try a few on your own. Please pause the presentation to try the following examples on your own. Look for the pause button in the lower left hand corner of your screen. Okay, now that you've tried the examples on your own, let's review. So if we're using the prime factorization method, we want to start by using the factor tree to find the prime factors, for example, A, the square root of 60. So 
your prime factor, your factor tree may look a little different, but you're still going to come out with the prime factors. So we could th say that 60 breaks down to 6 times 10. 6 breaks down to 2 times 3. And 2 and 3 are both prime factors. 10 is 2 times 5. And 2 and 5 are both prime factors. Therefore, we can rewrite the square root of 60 as 2 times, I'm going to use the 2 here from the 10, times 3 times 5. Once you've written your prime factors under your radical, find your, per, uh, your factors that match. So we have 2 and 2. They come out as one factor. 3 and 5 are not a perfect match, so they stay inside under the radical. So a 2 comes out, and underneath the radical is 3 times 5. And then our fourth step is to multiply to simplify. So keep the 2 as your coefficient times the square root of 15. So the square root of 60 simplifies to 2 times the square root of 15. So let's look at example B, 5 times the square root of 27. 5 is our coefficient. It's going to stay in the front. 27 needs to be factored out. So find the prime factors of 27. 27 factors out to 9 times 3. 9 factors out to 3 times 3. So our prime factors here are 3, 3, and 3. So again, keep your coefficient of 5 times the square root of, and write your prime factors under the radical. So 3 times 3 times 3. Now that we have our prime factors under our radical, find the factors that make a match, that make a pair. So 3 and 3 are a pair. They come out of the radical and make a factor of 1. So we have 5 already as a coefficient times 3 times the square root of 3. 3 is left on the inside by itself. So 5 times 3 is 15 times the square root of 3. So 5 times the square root of 27 simplifies to 15 times the square root of 3. So that's the prime factorization method. We also have the product rule. So the steps for the product rule is to list all factors of the radicand, which again is the number under the radical, then locate the largest perfect square factor, then expand the radicand and take the square root of the perfect square, leaving the non-perfect square under the radicand. So for example, if we have 2 times the square root of 54, the first thing we want to do is list all the factors of the radicand. So the factors for 54 include 1 times 54, 2 times 27, 3 times 18, 4 times um, no number equals 54, 5 doesn't go into 54, so the next factor would be 6 times 9. So now that we've listed all of our factors, we want to locate the largest perfect square. So we talked about perfect squares at the beginning of the lesson, so you want to look for your largest perfect square. 2 is not a perfect square, 3 is not, 6 is not a perfect square, 9 is a perfect square, 18 is not, 27 is not a perfect square, and 54 is not a perfect square. Remember, a perfect square has two factors that are integers that are identical that multiply together to equal that number. So 9 is your largest perfect square, so your factors that you're looking for are the 6 times 9. So we can rewrite this as 2 times the square root of 6 times 9. Now that we've located the largest perfect square, we want to expand the radicand. So keep the 2 as your coefficient times the square root of 6 times the square root of 9. So we've expanded the radicand. Now take the square root of the perfect square. So our perfect square is that square root of 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. So we have 2 times the square root of 6 times 3. Now we can multiply our coefficient of 2 and our integer times 3. So 2 times 3 gives you 6. And keep your radical of your non-perfect square. So 6 times the square root of 6. So 2 times the square root of 54 is simplified to 6 times the square root of 6. 
Now that I've showed you an example, please pause the presentation to try the following examples on your own. Now for the square root of 48, remember the first step is that you want to list your factors. So 48 has the factors of 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, 5 doesn't go into 48, and then 6 times 8. So here are your factors for 48. Now remember you want to find your largest perfect square. So 48 is not a perfect square, 24 is not a perfect square, but 16 is a perfect square because 4 times 4 equals 16. It has those two identical factors that are integers. So 3 times 16 is the factor that includes your uh, largest perfect square. So the square root of 48 can be written, rewritten as 16 times 3. Then remember to expand the radicand, so you have the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Then take the square root of your perfect square, so the square root of 16 is 4, and leave your non-perfect square under the radical, so 4 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 48 simplifies to 4 times the square root of 3. Okay, for example B, we have 3 times the square root of 24, so again, you want to find your factors for 24. All right, so 24 could be 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, and then 5 doesn't go into 24. So for your factors for 24, you want to find the one that has the largest perfect square. 24 is not a perfect square, 12 is not a perfect square, 8 is not a perfect square, 6 is not a perfect square, but 4 is. So there's your largest perfect square. So the square root of 24 is going to include the factors 4 and 6. So we have it's equal to 3 times the square root of 4 times 6. Remember to keep your coefficient out in front. So then we can expand our radical. So we have 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. Now we want to take the square root of the perfect square. So the square root of 4 is 2. So that's going to give us 3 times 2 times the square root of 6. And again, multiply if necessary. So 3 times 2 is 6. So 6 times the square root of 6. So 3 times the square root of 24 simplifies to 6 times the square root of 6. That completes your lesson on simplifying radical expressions. Please review if necessary. Thank you.